Hello and welcome to a new SpectMorph video tutorial. Today I'd like to show you how to use the new features which are available since SpectMorph 0.6.0, which are SpectMorph now provides a clap plugin. A filter with different filter modes was added. A new more flexible modulation system was added. And SpectMorph now provides visual feedback for modulated parameters. Creating a clap plugin. If you create an instance of the SpectMorph plugin, you will have the choice between a clap plugin, the VST plugin, and possibly an LV2 plugin, depending on which plugin formats are supported by the host. Usually, it is best to use the CLAP plugin, because it will integrate best into your host. I will show you the possibilities of the CLAP plugin format later on. In Bitwig, you will see this white symbol here, which is shown for CLAP plugins, so I will pick this one. In Bitwig 5, you can also set your preferences to never show the VST plugin if a CLAP plugin is available. I have created some notes in a little loop to show you how to use the new filter which we have in 0.6.0. I will add a little reverb at this point to get a nicer sound. With the default preset, this loop doesn't sound very impressive. Now I can adjust the settings a bit. So, this is a sound that we could create with the classic SpecMorph plugin. Filter. Now, here is what it sounds like if I enable the new filter and play with some of the parameters. <laughs> You can hear that the filter makes the sound a lot more interesting. We have two filter types. We have a ladder filter, which has different filter modes, which are different low-pass filter modes. We also have a cell and key filter. I won't go through all the modes of this filter, but there is a bandpass filter. And different high pass and low pass modes. Usually the low pass modes will be the most common choice. New modulation system. After I have shown you some of the possibilities of the filter, let me show you the new modulation system. You will see that some of the parameters have this little triangle next to them, which means that they can be modulated. Here, in this preset, we already have some modulation for the morphing parameter of this operator here. If you click on this, a dialog will open which can be used to configure the modulation for this parameter. At the top of the dialog, you can use this list to select the main controller for this parameter, in this case for the morphing parameter. If I set this to GUI slider, I can control the parameter manually. Mm -hmm. 
I will disable the filter for now in order to be able to hear the morphing more clearly. The other option we have is to use one of the control signals. You see that the dot is not moving right now, but I can control this parameter from the host either manually or by automation. Now, if you used SpecMorph before, you already know that we can also use the LFO number one operator to control this parameter, like in the original preset. We have the same controls for the most important parameters of the filter. Since we created a control number one automation curve, we can re-enable the filter and set the cutoff of the filter to control number one. So the cutoff comes from the host now. A new feature is that we have this modulation list for all parameters that support modulation. With this modulation list, we can select the GUI slider as main controller for this parameter, but we can make control signal number one also modulate the parameter. This supports adding different modulation signals together. For each of the entries in the modulation list, we have the choice between unipolar and bipolar. If I make this bipolar, the modulation entry will have a positive and negative effect. And if I make it unipolar, it will only have a positive effect. <laughs> This flexibility allows us to combine different modulation sources. To show you one example of how this could be used in practice, I will change the velocities of some of the notes in the clip. Right now, the notes with increased velocity are louder, but otherwise sound the same. Now we can select the filter cutoff and add the velocity of the node as bipolar modulation source. At this point, we have modulation from the host, and the nodes with a higher velocity get a higher cutoff. It can also make sense to use the velocity to increase the drive of the filter. Finally, it sounds a bit more interesting if we add some delay in the chain.
Clap plugin. One last thing to show you is that if you use the Clap plugin, like we did here, the modulation really is done individually for each voice. To hear this, I will play some notes manually. Now I will set the internal envelope of the filter to zero and use control signal number one for modulation. Finally, we can use one of the multi-segment envelopes from Bitwig 5 to give each voice its unique filter cutoff curve. You will be able to hear that the cutoffs of each voice gets modulated individually, which is a feature of Clap plugins. Of course, the per voice modulation works for all modulatable parameters in SpectMorph, like linear morphing, wave source positional play, grid morphing, and other parameters. And now, have fun with the Clap plugin, the new filter, and the new modulation possibilities. <laughs>